No Time to Die is finally here. And if you guys know me at all, then you'd know that No Time to Die was the number one movie I was looking forward to over the past two years. And before I saw this movie, I'll be honest with you guys, I saw some rankings online of where people would place No Time to Die in terms of their favorite James Bond movies. Most of them I saw near the top in the top 10 range, but a couple of them I saw at the very bottom, aka the worst James Bond movie. And I'm thinking to myself, how in the world can this movie be so divisive? Do we have a Last Jedi on our hands? Well, after watching the movie, I think we definitely have some divisive moments and not all James Bond fans are gonna like this movie, but let's discuss it. Hey everybody, my name is Brandon, aka The Brando Critic. Thank you guys so much for being here. I'm sending you all positive vibes your way, but if it's your first time here and you wanna see more movie reviews just like this, movie reaction videos, and hang out live streams where we talk about movies, then this is the place for you. Consider hitting that like and subscribe button, and go check out my partners at Movie Scene Canada as well. Their link will be in the video description box below. But today I'm here to tell you whether or not No Time to Die is worth the watch. Now, like I said in the intro, No Time to Die was the one movie I was looking forward to the most. Out of all the movies coming out in the pandemic range, of course we didn't know that there was gonna be a pandemic, and this was the first movie to be really delayed. And it just seemed like we were gonna wait forever to see this movie, but it's finally here. And honestly, I don't know how I feel about this movie. It kind of leaves me with a bittersweet taste in my mouth. And I think the best way to go through this movie is just to list off the things that I liked and then list off the things that I didn't like. Don't worry, there will be no spoilers in this review. So if you guys wanna go in completely blind, you can watch this review and go in without knowing any of the spoilers or any of the plot details. So one thing I noticed about this movie is that there are quite a few Easter eggs to previous James Bond films. Now, if you guys don't know, I'm a giant James Bond fan, and I watched all the movies, you know, from Dr. No all the way to Spectre in preparation for this movie back in April of 2020, but of course, like I said earlier, this film was delayed, so I had to re-watch a couple of them, watch some clips, and I noticed that there were a lot of callbacks to earlier Bond films, especially on Her Majesty's Secret Service. Hans Zimmer has a lot of callbacks to the music, especially the theme in that movie, and even some lines of dialogue from previous James Bond movies show up in this one, and this feels like a very well-balanced movie movie in terms of it has something from every single era and not just the cars right like we see the Aston Martin from Goldfinger right I believe that's the DB5 and then you got the V8 I think it's the V8 from Living Daylights you have both those cars they're both amazing but you got the cool gadgets you got the intense gritty action that Daniel Craig is known for and you have some humor in this movie as well that harkens back to the Pierce Brosnan and the Roger Moore days and I think this movie actually did a pretty good job of it the humor felt just right and there's this one character in the movie who plays kind of like this scientist he reminded me a lot of Boris uh, from Gold and I. So again, this movie takes little cues from every single era and I think they blended it really well together. I also liked how beautiful this movie looked. I think this is probably one of the best shot James Bond movies in terms of the cinematography, the production design, and just the color palette. I just felt it was it was really beautiful. And I like the overall plot too, right? The villain's evil plan. I won't spoil it here, but I was really invested. I'm like, okay, this is simple enough. This is threatening enough. It didn't feel like it was too campy. You know, it didn't feel like it was coming out of the 60s James Bond, it felt plausible, but it wasn't so realistic that it was almost, it lacked any fun. So it was a good balance, it was a good plot, and I liked the villain's overall plan. Again, it felt 60s enough, but yet it felt modern enough at the same time. And of course you have the shaken, not stirred, and the Bond, James Bond. But one of the best characters in the movie, really, was Ana de Armas. I think she is one of the most underutilized Bond girls. Now, as soon as I saw her in the trailer, and I only saw her in that one location, I'm like, okay, she's not gonna be like the main Bond girl of this movie because of course when you have Madeline Swan coming back basically the only returning Bond girl ever I think right? You know that Madeline Swan's gonna be more integral to the plot and the story, and then Ana de Armas is just gonna be, you know, we need to have a new Bond girl. But I thought she was great. I thought she was badass. I thought she was fun. I thought she was charismatic, and I thought she was also well-written. Of course she looks gorgeous, right? You know, she's a Bond girl, right? So she's gotta be just drop-dead gorgeous. But I really thought that her and Daniel Craig had some great chemistry. Of course, they were in Knives Out together, so they had a lot of fun dialogue back and forth, and I thought that she would have really worked as a standalone Bond girl. So it's a shame that we didn't get to see her very much in this movie, but from what we did see, I thought she was absolutely fantastic. Now, before I get into the moments of the movie that I didn't like, one character I thought was just okay, she wasn't great, she wasn't bad, was Lashana Lynch as the new 00 agent. A lot of people were kind of going into this movie, at least the people that I was talking to, they're like, oh God, it's gonna be kind of like this woke, you know, oh, we got a girl agent now. I thought they played it pretty well. You know, there's a bit of uh, jarring back and forth between her and 007 or James Bond. And you know, she was badass, but I don't think that she really left a mark on the movie as well as Ana de Armas did in terms of like charisma. 
she's good and you know she's beautiful and you know she works as a bond girl right but i don't know i don't think that she really had that much of an impact as much as the filmmakers really hoped that she would now this is where we get into the problems of the movie or maybe the minor grievances this is the longest james bond movie and it feels like it there was a lot of time in this movie where i'm like you know what i, I feel like we're not really moving the story along i feel like we're spending a lot of time tying in this movie with the previous movie and I will get to that but it felt like this movie really could have been trimmed down or this movie could have you know focused in some other areas because I definitely did feel the runtime I'm like guys this is getting quite long and I'm a big James Bond fan so normally speaking I'm gonna be like oh give me more give me more give me more but even in this movie I'm like checking my watch I'm like okay guys let's let's wrap it up a little bit and actually let's talk about those tie-ins with Spectre so the Daniel Craig James Bond movies they're all connected right it's all one big story whereas you know the earlier James Bond movies you you can watch them out of order you can just pick a random James Bond movie and you can basically get the story because it's kind of like Indiana Jones in terms of a formula you know you see the villains master plan and of course James Bond has to go to London and talk to mi6 and talk to Q and talk to M and gets his mission goes to a foreign location meets the girl and meets the villain and all this stuff and it's basically just the same structure but different locations different Bond girl different evil villain different car different gadget but in the Daniel Craig movies they're all tied together and after Spectre I know a lot of people did didn't like Spectre. I was, you know, kind of lukewarm on it. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. But this movie really focuses on blending those two stories together. And I'm thinking, you know, a lot of people didn't like Spectre, but it is part of the universe. So you have to really connect the two. So that means that Blofeld is part of the story. That means that Spectre is part of the story. And that means that Madeline Swan is also part of the story. And now I don't mind Madeline Swan, but even in Spectre, they had this whole like, oh, she's like the girl of destiny. Like this is the girl that James Bond falls in love with and I felt like the romance in that movie was forced so even in this movie where their relationship feels more established it still comes from like a rocky standpoint and again it's not really this movie's fault but it's just, uh, it's a shame that we had to bring so much of Spectre into this movie and the plot of this movie really revolves around Spectre and what happened in the previous film. Now, I don't know how you fix that. I don't know if you just kind of wipe the slate clean and just do a new James Bond adventure, but Madeline Swan is an integral part of this story and I don't know if that's really the storyline that James Bond fans wanted to see. And that leads into the villain. Safin. I think he is great, but like Skyfall, and even more than Skyfall, extremely, extremely underutilized. I'm thinking to myself, okay, this is getting up really, really long. We're only gonna see him in really the last section of the film. I feel like he needed to be way more fleshed out, and it sucks because he is intimidating. I loved his performance. I loved his plan. I'm like, okay, this plan is like extremely evil and maniacal. I love it. But again, I don't really get a chance to really know him. I don't get a chance to really explore his character or to really find out about his past and why he's doing the things that he's doing. He's evil and he's really good in the movie, but he's not in the movie for very long. Another thing that disappointed me were the action sequences. Now, the one scene in Santiago, there's a bit of an action scene there. That's actually pretty exciting. But all the other action scenes in this movie, while good, they didn't really impress me that much. They're not bad, okay? They are good action sequences. But after seeing Casino Royale, after seeing Skyfall, and after seeing Spectre, those movies have action scenes in them that wow me, that just blow my mind. I'm like, this is really, really exciting stuff. Here, the action scenes are good, but they didn't blow me away by any means. And that's a real shame. And again, any normal action movie would love to have action sequences like this, but it's a James Bond movie. So the, the bar is automatically raised. And maybe that's an unfair criticism, but I didn't, feel that engaged or excited by the action sequences because I'm like I've seen James Bond movies from the 60s 70s and 80s that have more exciting action than this so that's a bit of a shame I also felt that Daniel Craig's performance in some certain sections was a bit off Daniel Craig's performance is really the Jason Bourne James Bond right he's the more complex darker version of the story and whenever he brings the comedy to the role I don't feel like he can really handle it as well as a Roger Moore or a Pierce Brosnan it just feels kind of at odds and there's one scene in this movie and I won't spoil it. I'm thinking you are acting really out of character right now. This doesn't feel like James Bond. This feels more like a Daniel Craig humorous performance as opposed to James Bond's 007. And lastly, again, no spoilers. There are some moments in this movie where I'm thinking, I don't know if the fans are going to like that. They're very, very divisive. Now I understand that this movie is made in 2021. And I also understand that this movie is 
tied in with the rest of the Daniel Craig James Bond movies. This is a continuous story. And of course, when Casino Royale came out, it was basically a reboot to the Diana of the Day and previous James Bond films. So it's its own separate story. And as a film fan and a film critic and from an analysis standpoint, I'm like, okay, it makes sense for the story for these things to happen. But from a James Bond fan, it kind of leaves me in poor taste. And I left the theater feeling bittersweet and honestly more bitter than sweet. And I'm like, ah, is, is that what I want to see from a James Bond film? If you guys have seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. No spoilers here, but I don't know if that is something that I wanted to see in a James Bond film. And maybe I just need to get used to it, right? Maybe I've just been so used to seeing all these James Bond films go through the same formula. And when the formula breaks, to such an extent like this, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know how I really feel about that. So maybe I'll warm up to it, right? Like this movie definitely had more good in it than bad, but the bad moments or the questionable moments, they do really stick out. So unfortunately I wanted to love this movie, but I can't say that I love it. So my overall rating, it, it pains me to say this, but I'm gonna give this movie a three out of five. I liked it. Was it great? No. Was it as bad as Quantum of Solace? I don't think so. And again, I don't think Quantum of Solace is really a bad film. I don't think any of the Daniel Craig movies are bad. You know, this movie was better than Quantum of Solace, but Spectre, you know, it's, ah, it's around there for me. I, it's definitely not as good as Casino Royale or Skyfall. It has some great moments and it has some spectacular moments. And I'm like, I'm really loving this movie. But then there are some moments where I was bored. I felt like it dragged. I felt like the questionable decisions almost derailed the movie. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. And I understand that some people will be extremely upset with some of those decisions. Some of them I understand. I'm like, okay, we're making a movie in 2021. If you can kind of guess what I'm trying to go with this, I'm fine with that. But there are some decisions where I'm like, I don't know if this is what really works in a James Bond film. We haven't seen this before, but who knows where the franchise goes from here. What I would love, and again, this is just my own personal fanboy theory, and I, this is what I would love to see. I don't know if this ever is gonna happen. Christopher Nolan directs. They take place in the 1960s and you have Tom Hardy as James Bond, make it like a trilogy. And I feel like it could work because, you know, people nowadays are just craving nostalgia, right? Like we have all the Marvel movies and the DC movies and the Star Wars movies, and it's all playing on things from our childhood. There's so many reboots and remakes. And the fact that we even got a Space Jam 2 shows us that we love nostalgia. So I feel like instead of having the James Bond films be set in the current day, I feel like you could really go back in time and have your first period piece James Bond film and have a lot of fun with it. You can have fun with the cars and the gadgets and just the silliness and the wackiness and the campiness of it. And the production design, I'm really looking forward to seeing because you can, you know, in any direction you want with it. So that's just my own personal opinion. I know you guys might disagree with it. That's totally fine, but that's what I would love to see from a James Bond movie. And I'll be honest, guys, this is my review one day after seeing it for the first time after waiting to see it for almost two years. So again, my emotions might be tampering with the review a little bit. I try to go into every single film with an open mind, but you know, I'm going into this movie as a diehard James Bond fan. So maybe a couple years from now, I watch it again and I finally like really see what the filmmakers were trying to do and I love it. Or I could just see the problems even bigger this time and really hate it. So again, guys, from one day after seeing this movie, I'm like, right in the middle. I, I like it. I'm impressed with it, but I don't love it. And that's a real shame. So guys, tell me what you thought of No Time to Die down in the comment section down below. I really do appreciate all the support. Hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.